Hey, it's Adia and I'm back here with Vlogmas Day 2. And today I want to talk about mask me. That has been like a huge issue for so many people this year. And I wanted to share some tips and tricks as well as some prog as well as some products that I've used that have definitely helped me prevent getting acne caused by wearing a mask and also to help treat and heal acne that, you know, has developed. It's, at least I haven't found a way to 100% avoid getting any kind of irritations or acne from mask wearing, but I do have some tips and some products that have definitely helped reduce the amount of acne that I have gotten from wearing a mask. So let's get started. Okay, so welcome to my bathroom counter. <laughs> so I basically have kind of divided the products into before and after. And these are like the groups of products that I recommend to use or that I use either before I'm wearing a mask or after I come home and am trying to cleanse, treat, and heal my skin after I have worn a mask. So I'm going to talk about each one of these um, just kind of quickly and explain like my rationale. Like a lot of these products kind of do similar things and they're really, I'm just kind of highlighting the different ones just so that you can choose what you feel like makes more sense to you. But I just wanted to give you an over overview of the universe of products that I have here. As you can see, I have a lot of products, but these are the main ones that I go to for dealing with mask knee. All right, so first I'm gonna talk about the before mask products. And to me, what I've kind of discovered in these nine, 10 months since we've been dealing with this shelter in place is that a mask can really sensitize the skin. And that's for a couple of reasons. Number one, when you're wearing a mask, there's a lot of heat and moisture that is gonna be building up in the area that's under the masked skin. So that's like the perfect breeding ground for bacteria. And then you have the fact that wherever the mask is touching your skin, it can be irritating your skin, either because it could be like really tight to your skin or it could be because it's like rubbing against your skin. And so what I have found is that if I know I'm going to be wearing a mask, then I really want to be very gentle with my skin beforehand and use very, very minimal products on my skin before I wear the mask. I found that the less product that I have built up, the less like greasy and kind of like sweaty underneath the mask I'll get and therefore the less breakouts I'll get. So if I'm gonna be putting a mask on, then I like to start with a very gentle cleanser. And right now I've been using the Glossier Milk Jelly Cleanser. It's very, very gentle. It doesn't foam. It's just a light cleanser, not drying, non-irritating. So this or anything like this, I think is a great cleanser before a mask. And then as far as skincare, I'll do, either one or the other or a combination of these two products. So I have Glossier Super Pure, which is a niacinamide and zinc serum. I also have the, um, the Fenty Fat Water Toner, which also has niacinamide in it. So I might use one of those. Niacinamide is a really, if your skin doesn't have any interactions with it, it's a really great product for like calming skin. It's anti-inflammatory. It works great for acne. So, and it's also very light. It's like a water-based, it's typically in a water-based formulation. So it's not gonna be heavy on the skin and it's gonna soak into the skin. And then as far as moisture, if I need it, or if you need it, then a hyaluronic acid serum is great. I've been using this one by Makeup Revolution, and I actually, they sent me um, several skincare and makeup products, and I really do like the Makeup Revolution skincare products, and they're quite affordable, but I digress. But anyways, a hyaluronic acid serum is good because it's gonna, keep your skin moisturized, but again, it's not gonna be heavy. It's not gonna be greasy or anything like that. And I think that that is super important. If you have very dry skin, then 
And if you really do need a big, um, like a heavier moisturizer on top of a serum, then I recommend not putting the moisturizer in the area where the mask is going to go because that area is going to have a lot of moisture because you know when you exhale, <laughs> there's gonna be moisture if you're talking a lot. If it's hot or warm outside, like that area under the mask is going to have a lot of moisture. So if you have dry skin elsewhere, go ahead and layer another cream, but I would recommend do not put another heavy moisturizer in whatever area the mask is going to cover. So this is really like my basic before skincare product. And then for SPF, usually I'll just do SPF again in the top part of my face and I don't even bother putting it under my face. And that is how I prep my skin before I'm gonna be wearing a mask. Okay, something else that I found to be super, super key in reducing acne caused from a mask is to wash my face as soon as I come home and, re and remove the mask. To me, it's the same idea as washing your face after you've been working out because underneath that area, there's going to be sweat, there's going to be moisture, and you just want to cleanse your face. And so I have two different cleansers that I have used and it's really just up to your skincare needs and what other products you use. So I have the Fenty Skin Total Cleanser. I really like this cleanser. It foams up, but it's not super harsh. It's not super drying. So um, it's just a really nice one. I use this one pretty much every day. But every once in a while, I will use the Kate Somerville Exfolic Exfolicate Cleanser. Now, this one is, um, it's suitable for every day and it has AHAs inside of it, as well as pumpkin, papaya, and pineapple enzymes to exfoliate the skin. Now, I use this if, like for instance, if I was talking a lot or wore the mask for a longer period of time and feel like there's, my skin just feels like it's dirtier, then um, I'll use the exfoliate because it is gonna really be a deeper cleanse because it has the exfoliating property. So it really will help get off any extra um, dead skin. And so if I feel like my skin needs something more, then I do like to use this one. Okay, next I want to talk about moisturizing and healing your skin. And I started to use kind of more soothing and a little bit heavier moisturizers because I noticed that either because if it's a day where I'm wearing the mask and putting it on and off several times, I may be washing my face more frequently than previously. And I also, as I'll talk about in a second, do make sure to exfoliate the area that's um, kind of like under the mask a little bit more often. So I wanted to make sure I was soothing and really hydrating and babying my skin as well because I do believe that a mask is going to or has the potential to irritate and sensitize your skin. And so I want to balance the fact that the mask is an irritant and also potentially products that I may use to treat the acne may also be more intense. So I wanna balance that with something that's like more hydrating, more soothing. And so I have these three products that I really like for um, soothing and hydrating the skin. First is the Boleda Skin Food. This is like a cult classic skincare product. It's super hydrating, super soothing. It leaves the skin with a really beautiful sheen. And so this is a great like skin saver. Also, if you just have like really dry skin, this is a really nice product. So sometimes I will use this. Um, another product that I got like this summer or maybe this spring, but it's like a newer to me product. And that's the Ren Ever Calm. It's the overnight recovery balm and it's for sensitive skin. And it really is like, a balmy product, as you can see. And you just take a small amount and it kind of, as you warm it up in your skin, it becomes like an oil, like a solid oil, and just use that over the face. This is again, super soothing. It moisturizes the skin. Like I feel like with these two products, I don't need to put 
another moisturizer underneath. I don't need to put an oil over top. So these are really great. And then another Makeup Revolution skincare product is this Sika cream. It's a calming and soothing moisture cream. This is a super soothing, very hydrating product. As you can see here, like, um, I'm almost down to the end. Like, I love this product. It's very hydrating, simple, soothing. So these are moisturizers that I've been using because I really wanna make sure that I'm taking care of my skin and that I'm not overwhelming it with too many active products. Okay, next I wanna talk about exfoliating. I think, as I just mentioned, I think in my last video, I think pretty much everybody can benefit from exfoliating their skin two to four times a week, depending on your skin and depending on the product. I think that's just, for me, a rule of thumb. And especially as we age, that cell turnover starts to slow down. So it's really important to exfoliate your skin, to get the dead skin off, to make sure your pores are not clogged up. And that, for me and my skin, is a huge reason why I don't have a lot of breakouts. That being said, there's a few exfoliating products that I really like, that I highly recommend. And something that I think is a good reminder or that I just want to remind you guys about, don't be afraid to spot use your products or to use your products in just targeted areas. Just because something can be used all over the face doesn't mean you necessarily have to use it all over your face. So kind of especially with these two exfoliating toner products, what I usually will do is just focus using these on the area that's covered in the mask so that you're not necessarily over exfoliating the rest of your face or using it in areas that you don't have acne or that it's you know areas of your skin that are doing just fine. So two that I really like are The Ordinary. This is the glycolic acid 7% toning solution. With most exfoliating treatments, it's recommended to use them in the evening rather than in the morning. But if you know glycolic acid works for you, then this is a great option and it's quite affordable. This is a really big bottle, so it'll last you a long time as well. Another exfoliator that I really like is the Soft Reset AHA Exfoliating Solution. So these are both using AHAs. Um, this one, this is formulated, again, to be used every day. I don't, like I typically only exfoliate two to three times a week and that's what works best for my skin. So with any kind of active product, they always recommend that you ease into using it. Like first start using it once a week, then twice a week and just slowly build up until you find the right frequency that's gonna work for your skin. This Summer Fridays one I think is really, really nice. I use this a couple of evenings a week. I don't think my skin would be able to tolerate this daily, although I do see many people use it daily. For me, it's a two time a week type of exfoliator. Then I have one more exfoliator that I really like, and especially if you more, these are chemical exfoliators because they're, you know, as you can see, they're liquid and the ingredient that allows it to exfoliate your skin is chemical rather than manual, which is like this. So a manual exfoliator is going to be like a scrub. And so this Noto Botanics one, this is a smaller size than the size I sell in my store, Coveted Beauty. But you can see it's like, um, it's a scrub. It's not a super liquidy scrub, but this one I also really like. And um, it has walnut shell powder. So that's what is like the scrubbing that you will experience, but it also does have glycolic acid. So it's the manual scrub and it has the chemical. And so this is nice because you can kind of tailor the intensity. Like if you have more sensitive skin, you could just kind of apply it and just lightly scrub it. If you have skin that is not as sensitive, then you can kind of just use it almost like an exfoliating face wash type of product. You could leave it on for a couple minutes or you can just put it on, you know, massage it into your skin and then rinse it right off. It's really up to you. This can also be used on the body. So it can be used on like rough areas of your skin. 
I really like this product as well. This is all natural. And so sometimes if I notice that my skin needs something more and I've already used the Summer Fridays two times in a week, then I'll use this one of the evenings to really make sure that my skin is nice and clear. And I usually will not put this all over my face. I really do just kind of concentrate in this area because this is the area that I'm more concerned about having clogged pores and breakouts. Okay, now the last thing I wanna talk about is masks. So, like I said, because you could be using a lot of products, using maybe heavier moisturizers to soothe your skin and hydrate your skin, I think it's really great to incorporate some type of clay mask into your skincare routine once a week, just to really help detoxify your skin. So um, first I'm gonna talk about Clure. This is an amazing brand, like very ethical, very thoughtful, black owned, California based. So it's like speaking to me on so many levels. So the Supreme Seed Mask, it's a purification mask and it's supposed to help you reduce con congestion without dehydrating the skin. So I'm gonna show you guys what this looks like. This is a really nice mask. It does what it says it's gonna do. And that's basically all we want in skincare, right? So I really do enjoy this mask. And then I have two other masks that I carry in my store, Coveted Beauty, by Native Nectar Botanicals. So the first one is this purifying mask, which uses charcoal and also uh, clay. Charcoal is an amazing detoxifying ingredient. So that's why you see it like charcoal water. You see charcoal in air purifiers. It is an amazing detoxifying and purifying ingredient. So if it's in skincare, then it's gonna do just that, right? So it's a great like purifying um, mask. If you have blackheads, this is really good. If you just notice congested and enlarged pores, this is really good as well. It's not a drying mask. It's not gonna strip your skin. So this is a really, really great mask to add to your skincare routine. And lastly, I have the Clear and Glow mask, which again is a clay mask. The main difference is the purifying mask is more for normal to just congested skin, whereas the Clear and Glow mask is more for if you have acne and if you're really trying to address active breakouts or you have acne prone skin, um, that's like the real difference. This is gonna be more targeted to acne, but it also is going to help clear out your pores, but it's still gonna be hydrating. That's why it's called clear and glow. So just depending on your skin's needs, like for me, since I don't really have acne pro skin, I more use the purifying facial, but if you ha like are more worried about breakouts and healing breakouts and addressing breakouts, then I would recommend the Clear and Glow. So yeah, I know I just talked a lot, but this is something that I think about a lot and I think a lot of us are concerned about how to make sure that we're not getting a lot of breakouts from wearing a mask. So I just wanted to share my tips and products that I personally use that have produced positive results for me. I hope that they will be helpful to you. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know if you have any requests for later on this week. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.